Here I have the new Audi A8, and I know what you're thinking, is it as high tech as a Mercedes S-Class or BMW 7 Series? The new A8 starts at £69,000 or £73,000 for the long wheelbase version. So, does it have the wow factor to match its price tag? There's no mistaking that this car is an Audi A8, but the Audi grille has got even bigger. It's almost like the car's wearing huge dental braces. This one has got matrix LED headlamps with laser lighting for super high beam. As you move down the side, it's not quite so imposing. It's just a bit slab-like. I do like this though, the way you have these pronounced haunches at the rear. These bulges are a bit like those that you had on the old Quattro rally car. For me though, the best angle on this car is the rear. I do love the back end of it. This light strip reminds me of that on a Porsche Carrera 4S. It is very smart, the back end, it looks lovely. What I'm not so keen on though is this. Look, the fake exhaust pipes. Look, what's that all about? Now, what do you think about the design? Click up there to vote. Do you prefer the look of this? Mercedes S-Class or BMW 7 Series? While the exterior design may divide opinion, there can be no debating the A8's cabin. The interior quality on this car is just on another level. It's amazing. The materials are lovely. The leather's gorgeous. I really, really like this open pour wood as well. It's just classy. I also like the way that they've integrated the touchscreen into the dash area as well. Now, more on that later, but there is one problem with it, is that there's lots of shiny areas which pick up fingerprints, so you're going to be constantly wiping this car down to clean it. One thing I like is this. It's got Jaguar-style air vents, so they open up when you turn the car on, and the air vent moves forward like that, so it's flush with the dash. It looks lovely. I also like the fact that you can control the actual airflow by these touch-sensitive buttons. It's, it's the attention to detail. It's, it's incredible. What's also incredible is some of the new technology you will be able to get with the car. Automatic parking systems are nothing new, but this A8 takes it to another level. So I'm going to engage the system by pressing the auto park button and the car will scan spaces on my right and it can look for bay parking and parallel parking. Now, what I do is press this Audi AI button down here. I don't have to touch the throttle or the brakes. I do it all with this button and I have to keep it pressed down to prove that I'm still here. And then the car does it all for me. So the steering, of course, like in current systems, but like I say, the throttle and the brakes, that's all done by the car and it's a bit weird. <laughs> seeing it approach a pillar and automatically brake and then manoeuvre and again this is weird this is weird it's a bit disconcerting you're going to get used to it but at first just trusting the car that it's not going to crash ah, is interesting and then I just release the button and we're all good but it gets better you don't even have to be in the new A8 to park it so with the BMW 7 Series, you can park the car remotely using a key. With the Audi A8, I can do it with my mobile phone. So it'll just steer it nicely into this space here. And it can even deal with awkward angles. Look at that. It's just driving into the gap. It's dead easy. Look at that. The new A8 is also able to drive itself at speeds of up to 37 miles an hour on a dual carriageway without you needing to keep your hands on the wheel. Though this feature will only be enabled where it's legal to do this, i.e. not in the UK for now. However, there are some other comfort boosting technologies us Brits can enjoy. If you have a car fitted with the active suspension, it has a predictive element. So a camera can read the road ahead and it will lift the car up before you get to a bump to smooth it out. So you can turn it off and on. I'm gonna try the car first without the system on. So driver, off you go. <laughs> So the first bump is like a manhole cover. I'm also recording the vibrations on my phone. So that's the first bump, it wasn't too bad. Now, the second bump, which is like a speed hump, it's comfy, but you do feel it. So let's see what reading I got. So that was a maximum of 5.5 on my special vibrometer scale and an average of 2.8. So fairly comfy, but now we're gonna try it with a predictive feature on so the camera will spot those bumps and prepare the car. It will lift it up before we hit them. Here we go. So the smaller bump, like a manhole cover. Now, for me, I did not feel that at all. I did not feel it. It was like it wasn't there. Bigger bump. I felt it a little bit. I felt it like the manhole cover in the predictive system off mode. So let's see what this says, the vibrometer. It doesn't lie. So the vibrometer says the maximum was 5.1 and the average, it was 2.6 so I could feel it and so could the vibrate in my phone. 
The system uses an electric motor at each corner, working in conjunction with the standard fit adaptive air suspension. These motors can lift a wheel up or push it down independently, almost instantly to respond to bumps, and stop the car from pitching and diving under acceleration and braking. However, they also have another use. Now I'm going to try out Audi's new side protection collision system. So, if you have the Audi AI active suspension, let's say you're parked or pulling out across a junction and someone hits you from the side, the danger is that they're going to come through the door, which is the weakest part of the car. But this car has a special trick up its sleeve. So let's start the pretend collision. I've got this yellow block of foam that's going to come towards me. There is a glass panel between me and the foam so that it doesn't damage the car. And you'll see what the car does. So here comes a pretend vehicle. Oh no, I'm about to be smashed into. I'm in trouble. <laughs> did you see that? So what the car did, it instantly jacked up the suspension on the side. So if that was the car, it would have hit the sill, not the door. And the sill is much stronger, so that protects you a lot better. Now, one of the problems with driving such a huge car such as this, especially if you've got the long wheelbase version, is low speed maneuverability. So I'm driving a course here, which is which is fairly tight. And you can probably notice that I'm doing quite a bit of wheel twirling, especially to get it round 90 degree bends such as this. And where's the cones? Don't want to scrape the side on a cone. Obviously the power steering's nice and light, but I'm still having to move my arms about quite a lot. There's obviously disadvantages with having something quite so big as this, especially when you have to do a U-turn like this. So no, can't get around there. Gonna have to do a little bit of a maneuver. Yes, it's not so dignified when this is supposed to be a very dignified car. But Audi has a solution. So you can get the active dynamic steering and what that does is make this car drive like it's much smaller. So we're just gonna engage it now to compare the difference. So the way it works is that you actually have the steering decoupled from the, the actual front wheels. And so they can turn a lot more and a lot faster at the rear, you've got rear wheel steering as well, so it can make the car turn much tighter. So into the first bend, I mean, already, I can notice that it's just, look, look at this. I'm going around the same course, and it's, it's as though the car has just shrunk. It's like I'm driving something like a small family hatchback, not a big limousine. Look at this, this was a really annoying turn earlier. Look at that, <laughs> it's just so easy. I must say, it feels, a little bit weird, maybe slightly artificial feeling. Now this is the chicane part, which was a nightmare. Look, <laughs> Look at that. That is, that is effortless. Absolutely effortless. Now the real test is gonna be this maneuver, the U-turn. Now can I do it in one go? If I can do it in one go, I would definitely have this option. Come on car. I'm like a London taxi cab, look at that, went round. I'm amazed. Now this system, you can't turn it off and on. If you buy it, it's on all the time. We're just able to turn it off and on for this demonstration. Needless to say, most of this cool technology is optional. Still, the A8 does have more standard kit than its rivals, but it's not all perfect. There are a few areas where the Audi A8 isn't quite as impressive as its competitors boot volume, okay? So it's large enough, but it's just a few litres down of that that you get with the BMW 7 Series and the Mercedes S-Class. Then there's the weight. It's heavier than both those cars by a small amount. This long wheelbase version weighs in at two tonnes. This lardy weight isn't the only issue I have with the A8. Now there is one thing I'm really worried about with this car, and that's the fact that Audi has ditched the swivel wheel to control the infotainment system and gone for a touchscreen, and there's two of them. Let's see what it's like to use when you're driving because that's what matters and that's where touch screens are a bit of a problem. But okay, let's see if I can do it. So when I press a button, you do get a click sound and it vibrates slightly like your mobile phone does. So you do know that you pressed the right button that you wanted. But I, I'm still feeling that I'm taking my eyes off the road a little bit too much. Once again, if I want to use the, the heating controls which are located down here, I have to just 
you can probably see my eyes are off the road a bit too much. You just gotta move your finger in three dimensions. Whereas if you've got hold of a wheel, you can just do it in two and it's easier, but there is a solution. So the voice commands in this car are pretty good. So I can control the ventilation system using those. So set temperature. What temperature would you like to set? 25 degrees. I'll increase the temperature to 25.0. I wish you can do decimal places. Okay, let's try another thing. Find restaurants. Use the sat nav. Got Sorry, it I couldn't find any matches for this category. I just don't think you tried hard enough, love. Let's try something else. In fact, let's set temperature. It's getting too hot. I'll search for walk along the route. Okay, so. Sorry, I couldn't find any matches for this category. So it kind of works. Another special. But it's not that great. Cancel. I'll search for Cancel. Go away now. I'll be switching That's enough of that. <laughs> you can't stay mad at the new A8 for long, though, as there's just so much to like about it. Now, while this car is supposed to be all about comfort, there may be the odd occasion where you have to whisk your VIP away from a dangerous situation. Maybe you're in the remake of Ronin. So how does this car handle some bends at a quite a respectable speed. So, will it fall over? <laughs> no. <laughs> Looks like it does all right. It's a big old thing, quite heavy, but that active suspension props up the corners of the car so it doesn't roll too much. I mean, this is, look at this. <laughs> and of course, you've got quattro all-wheel drive, laying that power down. It's no sports car, but it's no big barge either. From launch, UK bars will be able to choose from a three litre diesel and three litre petrol A8. But sadly, not what I have here. The car I'm driving here is the four litre turbocharged V8. It's got 460 horsepower and it feels pretty quick, but I want to see just how quick it is at accelerating. So I'm going to put it into dynamic mode. There we go and just pull up. And then I'm going to launch it. See how long it takes me to get to 100 kilometers an hour or so. Um, six miles now. So go. It's pretty quick. And that's the 60. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Effortless. This luxury limousine did 0 to 60 in just five seconds dead. But really, this car isn't designed to be a drag racer. Cars like this are just as much about being driven in as they are driving them. So what's the AA like in the back? Well, this being the long wheelbase version, it's pretty nice. And I've got lots of toys that I can play with. So down here, I've got this little iPad thing and I can control things such as the seats, the lights. And we actually have matrix lights in the back, which means that I can move the spotlight from there around, say, if I want to read something in the dark, it's really quite clever. Other things I can do here is mess around with the blind, so I can choose which blind I want to raise or lower, so I can raise the blind, keep the sun off, a bit of extra privacy. Other things you can do is work the media system, the TV and stuff. And if I wanted to, I can actually remove this little tablet or put it back. You can also use these screens here. As you can see, I can swipe between different menus. Come on. And there's a the sat nav as well. But what about the comfort? Well, yeah, it's super luxurious and just so quiet. You've obviously got acoustic glass and the seats are lovely and I can recline them, get myself as comfortable as possible. And this is comfy. This is the long wheelbase car and it's comfy, but I feel like I want to stretch out more. Well, I can. I can press this and go full first class mode. So that seat's moving forward. This one's getting into a nice position. And then the headrest is dropping down. <laughs> seat's moving out of the way. And the next bit you're going to love. Hmm. I need somewhere for my feet. This will be just about perfect. Ah, look at that. Take me home, James. Well, Jack. In fact, let's go to the McDonald's, I'm hungry. This particular car's all-wheel steering really helped it navigate the narrow drive-through lane, but it wasn't all plain sailing. Okay, now I've spotted a bit of a problem. I'm gonna have to clamber across and this thing in the middle makes it a bit awkward. Hello? Hola. Hola. Um, can I order a chicken Caesar salad and a Diet Coke, please?
We're having to wait. If you've got an Audi A8 long wheelbase, you're probably not used to waiting, especially not for a McDonald's. Gracias. Gracias. Oh. Uh, yes. Right. That's enough of that. So, yeah. Oh. Now you might be wondering why the heck I bought a salad of all things from McDonald's. Well, while this car may be bought by a fat cat, I don't want to end up a fat mat. Ha 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 ha. Well, I spent a day with the new Audi A8 and I've been blown away by its comfort, its luxury and its technology. Has it got what it takes to beat a 7 Series and an S-Class? Well, my first impressions are, yes, it has. I think it could well be the ultimate luxury limousine.